sack with it? Get it. Oh, get him. Might end it. Best game. 12, 11. I don't know. Any fakes hurt? No, 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 you're not a tick, man. Oh, the lineman just screwed him. It's a man's game, dude. The lineman just screwed Three, him. Two. Victory! Oh, okay. yeah! Okay. And he spiked it! He might. Let's go. Did they call it? It's over with. Bring man. The voice of the Pirate Nation. Paint it. Pirate Let's fans, go. welcome to the U.S. Cellular fifth out. quarter post game. All right, Pirates victorious in Norfolk. And an ugly one, but a win. East Carolina wins it 20 to 14. Pirates hang on despite more interceptions, more turnovers, more sloppiness. But a win is a win. 2 and 0 feels awesome. And we'll be undefeated when Appalachian State comes to town next Saturday at Dowdy Pickland Stadium. Joining me, Holt Naylor's Caden Norman. Holt, 2 and 0. Yeah, <laughs> we're two and zero, oh, so tonight will be fun to uh, answer some of these questions. Clip, yeah, right it's going to be a little, a little different Golly. than last week. Caden uh, got the win though. Sloppy, 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 but a W is a W. Our sloppy second win of the year. We're going to the playoff. Cameron is our pirate towing first call of the fifth quarter. What's up, Cameron? Clip, what's up, guys? Uh, I've never done meth before, but uh, it, I think that game is about like what it's like to do meth. Uh, I, I, we're 2-0, baby. That's what I got to say. You know what? We're 2-0 for the first time since 2016. That game was a disaster offensively. Jake Garcia is just Mason Garcia's evil twin. If there was a Tom Brady of someone that could throw interceptions, it would be Jake Garcia because he's throwing balls to the other team left and right. But guess what? We still freaking won. We're 2-0. We're back. We're going to pack the stadium next week in App State, and we're going to be loud and proud. We're going to pack Daddy Fickley, and we got a score to settle with the Appalachian State Mountaineers. I lost 10 years of my life watching that football game tonight, and I don't care because we're 2-0. and 2-0. and Pack Daddy Fickley next week. We're going to get it figured out. We're going to be 3-0 and when we beat App State. And as always, go Pirates! Cameron is the worst. Uh, just need to say that. Get it off my chest. Uh, thoughts on the play calling tonight, guys? I mean, it's tough when your quarterback's playing like that, man. I mean, you look at his stats, though. He was 25 for 38. Is that right, Caden? Yeah. But just with four picks. So, like, is he just streaky as heck? And, like, just when he's hot, he's hot, and he's throwing out routes to the field right on a dime. And then when he's not, he's just throwing four picks and a half or three picks and a half. Like, I mean, it's tough to call plays then. But, yeah, I mean, when you have four turnovers, could have been more. There was a couple fumbles, too. Like, play calling is never going to look good in that situation Caden no I agree with you 100 percent, and I agree with Dave he, I, I asked Holton the same question he keeps throwing the double coverage keeps throwing the double coverage I think he's one not you know seeing the defense or two just staring his guys down to, to throw a double coverage that many times but one thing I also want to call out is you know we have 450 plus yards of offense we are moving the ball <laughs> again it gets shadowed over yeah. the, the four interceptions and the turnovers <clears throat> which are super frustrating and, you know, last week we gave him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was nervous. This week, you know, we all see it. He's staring down double coverage and making bad decisions. Hey, yeah, I got a question about why do we have a quarterback still in the game when he has four interceptions? That's, that's a good one, man. I mean, the thing you can say, though, is Coach Houston stuck with him and they won the game. So, you know, the goal of the game is to win and they won, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, that's a – He's going to have to answer that question sometime, man. You know, tonight or, you know, sometime this week, he's going to have to answer it. Um, the, you know, thoughts and prayers to uh, Javius Bond. Um, I, I hope it's not anything serious. Um, you know, you never want to see somebody go down that quick. Um, and I, I really do hope he's back this season. Um, and I hope it's not anything that's going to be uh, a serious or detrimental that requires surgery. Defense was awesome. Defense played the tails off. Can't ask for any more out of defense. Um, gave them bad situations repeatedly over and over and over again, and they and they kept bailing the, bailing the team out. Um, I, you know, I, I I'm gonna ask Holton this. Um, Holton, I, I'm, I've, it's already been asked. I'm sorry. You, do you open quarterback competition back up this week, or do you think it's whole, or still uh, Garcia's job? I don't know if it's his job. Um, I think it's. I don't think you change it now because you got App State rolling in. Do you want Hauser to go start his first game for ECU? You haven't really seen him much. Clearly, Garcia beat him in camp, and they saw enough for him to beat him in camp. To where do you want to throw the guy who you think lost the job out there versus App State? But also, 
he's thrown seven interceptions in two games. So it's like I wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't mind it. But also I understand, look, Houston – Last year, Caden already made, made the point. I don't know if you're on hold during this, but Caden even said, like, Houston might be a little bit sore from last year of making a quarterback change too early. And everything we've heard so far is he's going to have a long leash on him. Now, seven picks in two games, that's a pretty long leash. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think that's why Houston gets paid the big bucks is to decide that. Well, you got a rival coming in. You're bo- or We're going to be 2-0. and It's going to be a huge game for us. Um, do you go and bring out a new quarterback game three, let him have his first start in front of a huge crowd? He's played in big games before. Caden, what do you think? No, he's not benching Garcia this game. He, I think we, we'll, we'll just have to see how long his you know quarterback leash is and how many turnovers it is till Houston thinks about replacing him. I don't think he is. Every conversation we had with Houston in the offseason, he mentioned last year, you know, wasn't the wasn't what he should have did. Should have had a longer leash. And I think that's what he's going to do this year, especially like you said. Well, you know, App State biggest game of our year with Liberty coming in this week. So it's like, hey, he's going to give him, let him play. And big thing is when he's not making turnovers, he's fun to watch. He has a lot of confidence. He has a lot of moxie, but he's streaky. He's going to be streaky good or he's going to be streaky garbage. So it's just one or the other. I will tell you this, Kyle. I guarantee you there will be a conversation with Hauser and Houston behind closed doors and JDB too of saying be ready. Because next week, if you go in the first half, no matter if you're winning or it's tied or anything, and he throws three picks or two picks in the first half, yeah, you'll see Hauser. Another night. <laughs> hey, an, another win. Yeah, you know, you know what? In all these years I've been calling, I never thought I would call up after a win and complain about a win. It's unbelievable. But And usually I, I might get on fans for that, but not tonight because I was pissed off in the first half. I'm not going to lie. It, it was pitiful. And it was, a, it was a win, but it was an ugly win. So if you got complaints, I totally understand. Uh, I also will be trying out in the spring for kicker, I think. I've seen enough. Uh, and the net mouth, Wait. I don't know if you saw that. That was crazy. Hold on. Now, now we missed the extra point, but Conrad hit a huge 50-yarder. Yeah, a bomb. He, he did. He did. Uh, you weren't impressed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you can yeah. Well, you can try out. Try outs are welcome. Uh, let's let's start with the positives. So two and zero. I know some other causes said uh, you know that's that's many wins we had last season. So that's electric. I'll tell you another thing from being at the game. A lot of purple up there. A lot of purple up there. Love to see it. It was loud. You know, it was, it was a great atmosphere for the Pirates up there. That's all, and to the fan, to the players holding, that has to mean a lot oh, to go huge, on the road yeah. and see all that purple. It's huge. I remember, we remember playing there ODU in 2019, and that, I remember, like, that upper section uh, was just full purple and gold. There's, there's no better feeling going to away. Like, a Navy's usually like that, too. Like, home games are awesome, but going away and having your fans travel, a really cool one in my career was BYU as well. The fans travel really good. So, it means a lot, man. I mean, I, it definitely uh, makes a part and lets the players go play ball. App State has a really, really good culture, really good program. If we win next week, we'll be happy. Yeah. I, this isn't one of Dude, those. Dude, I'm fine. I, again, like, uh, you could look at my, my tweets tonight and be like, Clip has lost it. He, yeah. he hates EC, ECU. That's how down I was in the first half. I also said at halftime, ECU wins this game. Like, I yeah. still, and I, I don't care how we get to the win. I really don't. Well, it's exciting because, like, last year, the whole offseason, you're like, if we have an offense at all, like, we're going to win a lot of games. Yeah. And it's like, well, we kind of have an offense right now, but, like, <laughs> if we can figure this out, we can really win a lot of games because our defense is good. Now our special teams is killing it, too. Yeah. No, 100%. And one thing is, like, when are we going to – who decides to buy in the program off turnovers? <laughs> well, come on. Let's let's believe – I hate cheesiness and football. I hated the cheesy coaches. But after talking to Jeff Blake this past week, hey, the lunch lady has to believe. If we win these games off this, freaking believe and let's win. Let's go. We wanted them and we got them for the second straight <laughs> week. Last week's little nugget of the game at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. We welcome on little nugget from Grimesland. What's up, Nugget? Guys, what's up? I uh, I think it's pretty obvious by now that I've decided to just embrace uh, the little nugget of the game. Uh, last last week I was a little upset. I didn't feel like it was very deserving. Um, I'm a, like I said, I'm 25 years old, grown man. Don't feel like a little nugget. But you know what? It's sponsored by Chick-fil-A. My wife and I are regulars at the Chick-fil-A in Winterville, probably an unhealthy amount, so I'm okay with it. 
Um, Abbott, you want to sponsor me? You can do that. You got the app, right, Nugget? You got to have the app. Do I have the app? I have record numbers <laughs> of, of, of points. Uh, yes, sir. I hear you. All right. First of all, shout out to Little Nugget. I would... This is how small of a town Greenville is. I actually watched the game with a little nugget tonight. So, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So much for saying anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say your name. I just said I was, I was with a little nugget tonight. I felt I felt kind of famous. I got Jansen Kid out here giving my address. And, uh, <laughs> Holden walked in thinking he was going to be like the biggest name in the room, but he was overshadowed by little nuggets. <laughs> Who's that little nugget over there, man? I mean, he did ask for my autograph at the end of the night. <laughs> Did we talk about the end of the first half? I we, we really haven't happened. talked about it a lot. So, Holton, I saw you put something up on social media. So, what, you think it was a, a helmet thing where they were telling one thing and Houston was doing the other thing? Or what do you I, think? You know, I'm a, I'm a big conspiracy here, so I'll start with that. Um, but I think, I mean, that's the only reasonable answer. If not, they just manage it horribly, which they did either way. But this new helmet mic, the quarterback has a mic, and if you watch the film – Garcia's telling the guys, spike, 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 while the field goal team's running on the field. So my thought process is John David Baker in the headset is telling Garcia to spike the ball while Houston is sending the field goal you know, team on the field. And then you're out there and you look around. And I'm going to give a shout-out here to Zion Wilson, the right guard on field goal, looks around, Notices there's not a quarterback back there. Decides, you know what? I'm going to go play quarterback. He steps back, calls for the snap, catches the ball, and spikes it. Now, it didn't count, but the set on that guy to do that himself, man. I mean, I'm impressed. We go next to uh, Brooksy in Binghamton. What's up, Brooks? What is up, guys? How's it going? Great, man. We're 2-0. and Absolutely. Look, I don't know if this is fifth quarter history, but I am calling from a Dave and Busters right now. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I don't know. Might have to check the history books on that one. I didn't get to call in last week, so I didn't get to share my favorite Holton Aylers and Caden Norman memories. So, I'm going to do that right now. And has nothing to do with football. It's when Holton and Caden were on an intramural softball team together. I was umpiring the game. The two of them come running in from the outfield because I think the gold speed or whatever they call the end-of-year athletic awards, now was wrapping up. They come in with khakis, Oxfords, button-ups, all that stuff, running into the game. Bolton, in, I think, fairies or loafers, rolls up his khakis like capris, and it absolutely hits a tank over the property line fence. Not the home run line, but like the property line that separates ECU campus from Greenville. Uh and that was really cool. And Caden was also there just to take part in that as well. So that was my favorite memory of those two. That was a good time. I, I appreciate that. That was a good time, Caden. You you were a part of that. I, I, I took part of it, yeah. I like that. So I just wanted to get it out there. Uh, great to be 2-0. Uh, I think having two quarterbacks on the fifth quarter has been absolutely tremendous, providing insight. Uh, proves why Pirate Radio continues to be the best in ECU coverage uh, year in, year out. We go to Randolph in Greenville. What's up, Randolph? Hey, how y'all guys doing tonight, man? 2-0. Oh. What's up, Randolph? What talking about? Randolph, uh, you know a thing or two about interceptions watching Dak every week. Dak. See, he, go to, he didn't go to Dak training camp. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Dak Passing Academy. We're going to have a sellout crowd next week. It's going to be insane. App State ain't going to be ready for the for the humidity we're ready three and oh is coming next week i told you last week i'll tell you again this week we're back zach i gotta ask a question so you dm the podcast page i believe oh he's gone i think that's the local politics guy clip he dm the page and said he thinks it's him he was drunk one night that's local politics but it don't sound like him to me I, 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 i'm a conspiracy be. theorist because that guy was using a fake alias because he called in from with two different names from two different places back to back weeks. <laughs> yeah, There's local politics, bud. That sounds just well, like it. Sounds a little closer than I thought in my head. Hey, Cliff. Hey, buddy. I got I got one thing. The one thing that I'm gonna say. I, we look like a JV team at the end of the first half. That <laughs> kind of crap right there. That's stuff that you see in a JV football game. I'm not the best coach in the world, but I coached high school for six years, 
and I coached down at Bladenburg, the 1A school, and our coaching staff was better developed and communicated better than those guys that have got hints. That was freaking ridiculous to act like that and to handle that situation that way. That was pathetic. We were darn lucky to win that damn ball game tonight. Damn lucky. Y'all have a good night. All right, Skip. I, I'm fiery. I'm with you, man. Uh, this guy's got some gall calling in. 0 for 2 on his locks of the week this year, uh, this season. John Moody in Moorhead. What's up, John? What's up, Clipper? I'm surprised you got money to afford a phone the way your bets go. I've got some money because I smashed the EC money line. <laughs> <laughs> Attaboy. Attaboy. Uh, so, Zach is back. Holden, you had a question for Zach and Dunn. He's back with us. Zach, are you Mr. Local Politics? Hold on, I genuinely think I am. I mean, I was pretty highly intoxicated that night, and I'm pretty sure I called back from Jack, Zach from Jacksonville, Zach from Dunn. But I mean, it's local politics, bud. Um, I mean, I, I, I've had four or five people tell me that I'm the guy. The more I hear it, the more I think it. And the more that it goes unconfirmed, the more that I think it. So you know what? But at the end of the day, what's another team that can throw four interceptions tonight and still win against Old Dominion? Agreed. Are you going back to your first call? <laughs> We've already had your call. Yeah. Well, let's hear it one time, Zach. In, in the call with it. In the call with it. Just one time. I already did it. Do it again. Do it again. It's local politics, bud. Oh There's yeah, it's local politics, him. bud. Mm. Yeah, that's him. Okay. No, I... it, it's a different tone because I said it's local politics, bud. <laughs> There's local politics, bud. Man. I was pissed off. Uh, I think Holden, I think you uh think there there may have been a loss involved with that call. Yeah. Uh I've already publicly apologized to you on Twitter. Oh yeah, we're cool, man. Yeah, so we're good. I mean we've 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 had Twitter beef squash, we've had uh the uh the podcast call. I mean we're we're Gucci, baby. Yeah, we are, man. You're, you're even in the intro of the pod now. You're on T shirts. I mean, you kinda made it big time as Mr. Anonymous now finally coming out. So uh I bet it feels good for you to get that bird off your chest. Local politics, bud. <laughs> That was the rewind or not. <laughs> oh, that's great. Nobody talked about breaking the white jersey curse tonight. There is no because there is no curse. We've broke the curse. I talked to Holden before the show on the pregame. You named off several games where you won with a white helmet. The Birmingham Bowl, I mean, we won the white helmet, so yeah. uh, that's a pretty big one. Uh, BYU, too, we won in white helmets. I mean, yeah, we, we won plenty of white helmets. I mean, uh, all sports fans, look, I do this with the commander, but uh, Pirate fans love to kind of – hang on to one thing like nobody travels like the pirates well you know a lot of fan bases travel or yeah. nobody <laughs> we never win in white jerseys but we do we, we win holden good show again appreciate it buddy yes sir hey ready for next week now clip let's go caden two and oh we'll do it again next week let's bring the juice let's bring the juice all right for the crew i am clip brock we'll see you next saturday on the bud light pregame tailgate and the u.s sailor fifth quarter call-in show Huge week, app week. We'll get it started Monday on Pirate Radio Live before that noon on the Brian Bailey Show as we preview ECU and app all week long. Come on now, 2 0. We stack it. What's up, man? Come on now. Where you going from, bro? Where you going now? Come on now. 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 Hey, big dog, big dog, big dog.